In this video, we're going to build a work cell with some assets we've provided for you. And in later videos, we're going to import this into 3ds Max, and I'll show you how to do some various animations with it. Let's start by opening up a new factory layout. Now let's go ahead and save this. You can call it whatever you want for now. You might start out in the standard system assets folder. So if you do, you can just navigate to the tutorial assets folder. So once we're in our tutorial assets folder, let's start by placing the palette slide in the center. We actually want to spin this around, so type in 180 degrees and hit enter. Then right click and hit done to exit the command. This is actually going to be the center of our work cell, so let's right click and hit grounded. And that'll keep that part in place. Next we're going to add our robot stand. So place this about where you want it. Hit enter. And then hit escape to exit that command. We can actually use the standard inventor assembly tools in the assemble tab to help us line this up. So let's click constrain, switch to the flush command, and select both of these faces and then hit apply to finish the command. What that's going to do is line both of those faces up in the same plane. Next we can drag the table to center it over the pallet slider. Now that our table is aligned, let's go ahead and start adding our rollers. Let's pick a small roller, type in 90 degrees to twist it, and hit escape. And then let's place our larger roller and snap that into place. Now what you'll notice is these actually aren't quite symmetric, so we need to make sure that these boxes on the left hand side are lined up. So once that's done, we can use the constraint command in the assemble tab again, and use the flush command to make these two faces. Hit apply and then switch to the make command to make these two faces. And then hit apply to finish. So now our roller is lined up right where we want it. We also could have done this visually just by sliding the rollers around and moving them into place. Now let's go ahead and add a pallet to the end of the roller. We can line this up the same way using the constraint command, or we can just do it by hand, either way. So I'm going to mate the inside edge of the roller with the outside edge of the pallet, and that should line this up right where I want it. Hit apply, and then check the alignment. That looks pretty good. So now what we're going to use is in the factory tab, we have the reposition command. What that's going to let us do is slide this up just in the direction we want it. Then we're going to try to align this as close as we can. It doesn't really matter too much as long as it looks good. So once that's in there, we can right click and hit done to escape the command. Now we can do the same thing from a top view to slide our pallet to the edge of the roller. So let's hit reposition and we can slide this just along the x-axis right down to the end. As a side note, if you ever want to quickly return to an isometric view, you can just hit the F6 key and that'll take you to this view. Now we're going to use the pattern feature inside the factory tab to make three of these rollers quickly. So first let's select all three components we want to pattern and then select column and select the edge in the direction we want them to pattern in. And you'll notice this arrow is backwards so if we flip this direction it'll pattern the other way. And we want three of these and they're going to be about 61 inches apart. 
Now we have our three rollers with the three pallets at the end, just like our model works so. out. So now what we're going to do is add our fence. So you notice the fence needs to be turned 90 degrees. So once you have this place, type in 90 and hit enter. Then hit escape to escape the command. Then we can just click on the fence and drag it around until it's roughly where we want it. You'll notice the three rollers will go out the doors in the front and the pallet slider will go out the small door on the side. Once it's about where we want it, we can use the reposition command again to reposition this more precisely. Again, the exact position isn't critical, as long as it looks good. So now that our fence is in place, we can go ahead and add our pallet stacker. So we're going to turn this 90 degrees, and then we're going to go to a top view and use the reposition command to line this up. If you want to reposition in more than one direction at a time, you can just click the yellow plane and that'll let you free drag in that plane. So next I'm going to show you how to add some boxes onto a pallet using the surface snap feature. So first let's drag a pallet onto the floor. Now we can go up into the factory tab and under snap types, make sure you've selected snap to surface. So now let's go ahead and drag a box. And you'll notice when you drag over the pallet, the top surface has light up. So now we can actually snap to the top surface of the pallet instead of the floor. Now we can move this object just like we have before, just on top of the pallet. So now once our first box is in place, we can drag and snap more boxes to fill the pallet. Now what we can do is go into the Tools tab and click Distance. What we're going to do is measure this edge so we can pattern these boxes and know how far to space them. Now we can go back into the factory tab and select pattern. Select each of our boxes that we want to pattern. Select column again and find the edge in the direction we want to pattern. Type in the number of patterns you want and then type in the length of the edge we found before and hit OK to finish the command. So now you have all the tools you need to finish this work cell. So you can add more pallets, boxes, and our robot. And here's the completed work cell. In the next video, I'm going to show you around the user interface in 3ds Max so we can start doing some animations.